Good morning, Vesta. How are you? I just got to make sure that I'm finding myself on Facebook. Good mor morning, Karen and Nancy. Good morning, good morning. Robin, Doris. Good morning, everybody. Okay, so I found myself. Hi, Carol. Yes, you're staying warm. I bet you've got it a lot colder than we do, and we're cold. So, um, yes, please stay in and stay warm. Good morning, Mindy. Great. It's so good to see so many here. Hi, Pat. Hi, Lisa. Okay, just get myself situated. Michaeline, good morning. You have to look for yourself all the time. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Okay, so we'll get started. Um, when I flip the camera down, um, I'm just going to go over um, some Stampin' Up! business uh, real quick. Uh, remind everybody that the January to June catalog has launched, and so is Celebration! So um, we'll go over that really quick and a, uh, just a few reminders and then we're going to get started on our patchwork easel valentine. So I don't know why this gets me every single time, but I got to flip things around here. Okay. Bear with me. No, Nuji, you can't come up here, kitty, kitty. That's a big no-no for Mommy. Okay, now we have to flip that. Is that back? No, that's not backwards. Okay, good, good. But there's one thing I've got to switch around here. And it'll only take but a minute. That way I can bring all of my, what I need to, closer to me. Okay, that's looking better. I try to make the most out of the space I have, but sometimes I have to... Um, switch some things around just so that I can feel like I can spread out and work. So, as I had mentioned, um, Tuesday, the new mini catalog launched. And this is from January to the end of June of this year. But from Jan in January to the end of February, we have celebration. So what that means, if you're new to Stampin' Up!, is that for every $50 you spend in this catalog or the annual catalog, you will earn free merchandise from this brochure. And it's exclusive to Celebration. So there's all there's designer series paper, there are stamps. Um, you just get to browse through this catalog, this little brochure, and pick out free stuff. So if you're new to Stampin' Up! and you don't have a demonstrator and you would like me to send you the mini catalog, the celebration, and even if you need the annual catalog, please send me a message and I will get your mailing address from you and I will get that sent out. Again, celebration only goes through the end of February and the items in celebration are while supplies last. So if you see any favorites in there, you might not want to wait uh, too long because you never know what's going to be popular, the most popular, and you could end up missing out on one of the things that you could have gotten for free. So that's what I'm going to say about uh, the new launch of the mini catalog and celebration. 
The other reminder I wanted to let you know about is that this is the January Barn Quilt Block of the Month card kit. And you can still register for the card through Saturday and then the invoicing process starts and on the 15th I will mail the kits out. So this these are the barn quilts that we we've been doing barn quilts for over a year and last year we created 27 different barn quilts with this block of the month card kit everybody seems to be enjoying it very very much so we're gonna just keep on going and uh, if you would like this kit then you need to message me your email address and your mailing address so that I can get you on the the list okay so I better introduce myself right my name is Julie Heights I live in Toledo Ohio and I have been a Stampin' Up! demonstrator since 2019. I am going into this um, as a hobby demo, but over the last year when um, we were pretty much in lockdown, um, I stepped out of my comfort zone and started doing some Facebook Lives. And this little community developed of wonderful, wonderful people. And, of course, I'm talking about all of you. And so with that, my business is starting to take off. Um, I'm glad it's not really taken off by leaps and bounds. And I know that might really seem weird to hear, but I'm someone who has to take things slow. And I like to get to know all of my friends through the Facebook lives. And so I'm okay with things going slow. That way I don't get overwhelmed. But I did start out as a hobby demo. I still consider myself a hobby demo, but I'm just moving forward. So, and it is exciting and and fun. So I am also the known as the chirpy card maker of quilts and more. I was a quilter and I still love quilts, although it's been a while since I've actually got my sewing machine out. But I, I love quilts, and I love birding, and I love so many things. So card, the Chirpy Card Maker of Quilts and More, I want it to be open to all things that are creative and pique our curiosity. So thank you for joining me on this Thursday morning. The card that I had chosen to make is this easel card. Let's make sure it's going to show. Okay. I'll tell you, Blushing Bride does not show up on camera or good in, in lighting. It doesn't. It looks like it's... Well, okay, I'm sorry. Not Blushing Bride. This is pale pink. Let me... This is why... Petal pink. Petal pink is what I use for this card. I'm switching to Blushing Bride today. I hope it shows up better than the petal pink. Okay, so this is our patchwork heart. It is a four inch square and it's a 16 patch. So we have four one inch squares across, four one inch squares down for a total of 16. And this is going to be our quilt block for today. And we're just going to do a new, a different version of the easel card where we are going to make it stand up in landscape mode rather than in portrait mode. But also just shifting our focal point to, you can either shift it to the left or to the right. So that's the card for today. And I wanted to showcase the... A couple of items that are in the the new mini catalog this is the sweet talk designer series paper this is so cute these are all the heart the large busy heart um, patterns so you get six patterns here 
This one's my favorite. But they are so much fun. But when you turn them over because they're double-sided, then you get patterns and colors that you can use, not necessarily with love and, and Valentine's Day in mind. Some really good, fun colors too, Bermuda Bay and Granny Apple Green. So this is the Designer Series paper. <clears throat> Excuse me that um, I chose to use. <clears throat> oh my goodness. And then this is the stamp set. I love this stamp set. I love the font. It reminds me of the uh, farmhouse uh, fonts. And for the first card I did, I chose the I love you, which has a little heart there. And you matter to me. Today's card I'm going to use I have you and yay for love. So it's going to be yay for love. I have you. So those are the sentiments from this stamp set that I'll be using today. But it's got a really, it's got happy dad day, happy mom day. We have to celebrate this. Hello, baby. Um, all day your way. Lucky me. Thank you. So this, if you like to add a sentiment stamp set to your collection, this is going to be a really nice one to have, okay? And I, the other thing from the annual catalog I'll be using is the, the heart punches. So I tried to bring in some things from the annual catalog and the new mini. So let's get started with putting our 16 patch together. <clears throat> oh my goodness, I'm so sorry about that, you guys. I got a frog in my throat. And we'll do our, our patchwork valentine first. That way we can let the glue dry a little bit. And we'll go to putting our easel card together and then come back to this. So here on the grid paper, I drew, I drew a four inch square. And then I just drew in one inch squares, four across, four down, all the way so that is our, that's the grid that we're using. And I chose four patterns out of that designer series paper. And, you know, it's always good to have extra squares when you're doing blocks like this. So that if you change your mind and you want to change the layout, you have some extra pieces cut already. We actually only need 10 out of these 12 one inch squares. But like I said, I like to keep my options open. So you're gonna need, let's draw in our heart first. Let's draw this together. So the first row across. From this corner here, we're just gonna draw a half square triangle into a mountain peak. Then we're going to come down the mountain into the valley. And we hung out for the valley for a little while, but we want to go back up the mountain. And then we're going to come back to the valley. Okay? So that's drawing in the top part of our heart. We're going to skip down to the third row across. And starting in the upper left hand corner of the third square we're just going to draw a diagonal all the way down to the last row in the center so we're just going to draw that in and all we're doing is giving ourselves some a guide to go by and now we're going to go back up until we get to the other side. So that is your heart, okay? I hope everybody's got that drawn in. And now what we're going to do is you're going to just start playing with the placement of your one-inch squares so that you get something that you like. And I don't like, if my, if my paper has direction, then I like to 
change it up so not everything is going the same way. So just going to, I want you to just play around with the papers that you chose and love, and this card does not have to be um, all pinks and reds and, and things like that. A heart can be for any time of the year. So, um, experiment with different colors. Let's put that like that. So there's four across that are full squares, and then you've got two squares here that are full. I think I'll bring in this one from this side, and I really like these little conversation hearts. And now what you decide is what you're going to need half square triangles for the top, the side, and the bottom. So you're just going to want to cut your remaining squares in half on the diagonal. I'm going to bring in my trimmer. And I wanted to show you, um, using your trimmer, what's really nice about the Stampin' Up! trimmer is it has these little bumpers at the top and the bottom. And I don't think, I don't know, maybe Stampin' Up! <clears throat> excuse me, designed it that way. But you know what it really does is when you put something on point, it holds it really nice down there. You just want to put your points in the cutting track, lower your guard, and then um, make your cut. I don't recommend coming in right where the point starts because the blade can get caught on your paper and crinkle it up. So when you lower your guard, put your blade down into the center of your designer series paper and then cut up and down, and then you won't. Um, have the blade messing up your paper. So just real quickly here. Cut some of these up so that we have some more options. And if you are ahead of me in doing this, you've already got your half square triangles laid out, you and your square one inch squares, then you can go ahead and start gluing them to your pattern that we drew on the grid paper. I will be caught up here in just a second. But if there's anybody new watching, I wanted to demonstrate how I cut half square triangles and give you some tips about not letting the blade start at your point and how nice it is with this trimmer that those little bumpers hold your squares on point so that you can get that nice cut. So we'll move that out of the way. Bring our heart back in and now it's just a matter of deciding where we wanna put the rest. And I'm using different papers than I did <clears throat> in my sample. And I'm also trying to change the directions of my paper. And what I'm also trying to focus on is not putting two of the same color values next to each other. Sometimes you can't help it. Let's put that one there. And then once you're happy with your placement, you can start laying these or gluing these down. So I'm pretty happy with that. <clears throat> I 
I do not know what's wrong with my throat this morning. Gosh, I so apologize. So let's start gluing. I'm just moving all my parts out of the way, but trying to keep them in order. And I just take my glue bottle and you want, you don't want a whole lot of glue to come out because you don't want it coming, squishing out from underneath your, your paper. But I just kind of like, <clears throat> Lord have mercy on this throat. Um, I just kind of look at it as painting glue on my grid. And then I'm just going to come in and I'm going to lay my pieces in there. You want to make sure your lines are straight because just like in quilting, this your lines are very important because when you're putting another piece next to it, you want it to, to line up really nice and everything just fall into place. And then I had these two. And another thing you want to focus on is making sure that your points are glued down to the paper and that they're not lifting up. And the nice thing about using the liquid glue is that you've got some time to move things around. So here I'm just going to paint in with some glue, two squares at a time. But these seams up to each other so it looks seamless. And making sure that your lines are straight. It's nice working with these bigger pieces too. They're a lot easier to handle. Because with quilt cards and quilt blocks, when you're doing paper, um, you tend to work with some tiny pieces. And then we get this half square triangle and this square. And we just got two more half square triangles to do. And then we are going to set this aside to dry. And then we'll come back in and we will cut our heart off of the grid paper. There's our patchwork heart. There it is. We're just going to put that to the side and let it dry. And we are going to move on to creating our card base. Hi, Renee. Hi, Cheryl. Okay. Um, what does, let me see what this says. Oh, Mindy broke down and, and ordered the heart punch pack. You know, hearts can be used all the time. So I, I, I love them. I love them. 
and just you know weddings you can use the hearts for wedding cards um baby cards you're happy and <clears throat> and love a newborn baby <clears throat> this is ridiculous I've been talking to my husband for an hour before doing this live and my throat did not do this. Um, okay, so bringing in our pieces for the card. Let's start with the card base. I'm using Blushing Bride and this is five and a half by eight and a half. I scored it at four and a quarter and then halfway again um, is two and one eighth. And we're just going to fold and burnish. I like to do both sides. <laughs> and then we're going to fold and create a mountain. And so it's opposite of a Z fold. We're just going to make our folds all going the same way. So then this way, this is what helps your easel card stand up okay and then what we're going to do first I have three pieces that of designer series paper of the sweet talk that are two inches by five and three eighths and what we're going to do is we're going to glue them down to the two panels on the front now remember, this is going to be your back, so if you've got a directional pattern, you may want to pay attention to how you glue it down. And we're going to glue it, so these two get glued to the front of the card. And then I'll show you where the third one goes. I might have overdone it just a little bit with um, adding layers of designer series paper. Um, I'll let you be the judge of that, but um, I just thought it needed it. There was too many plain, plain areas, so I gave it some more paper just to make it look finished. And what you're going to do is you're going to glue that and you want a nice even border and it's going to be, it's going to just be like a peekaboo border all the way around. And then I'm going to turn it and I'm going to glue this one down. And since this is going to be the front, I want my hearts facing me. Honestly, this piece that's on the front, a lot of it's going to get covered up. But you know why I kept it was because it's going to help me align my, my patchwork valentine. So even though this side is going to be covered up pretty much... Um, I went ahead and cut it, cut it the full length. I have a hard time using up designer series paper, especially with quilt cards because I use so, you know, my pieces that I use are so small that I end up having so much paper left over. So I'm not really worried about um, covering this up. It, you know, I don't find it wasteful in a, you know, so to speak. Um, I've got, I've always got paper left over. When you open up your easel card, I didn't like this being left plain. So that's where your next piece is going to come in. And yeah, it's kind of tucked in there and would anybody really see it? But I just think that it really helps to finish off the card. So I'm going to put that in there. That's on the inside. Now, the inside of our easel card. I have two layers. I have 
um, Highland Heather. This is going to be my mat. But before I glue this down, I need two ruffle hearts to, to uh, layer my smooth edge hearts on. So since I'm going to be covering up the Highland Heather with this piece of basic white, I'm going to punch my two hearts from this piece of paper so that I don't have to get out another piece. It's going to be hidden anyway. As long as I don't get too close to the outside edges, I don't want it what I punch to come through my border. But I'm going to set those aside. And I'm going to keep them up here at the top because my easel is going to come down. And then I'll go ahead and glue this down. You don't have to do it this way. If you've got scraps that you want to use up, then go ahead and punch your heart from your scraps. It's just another way to kind of save your cardstock. And again, we're going to leave this little tiny border a Blushing Bride peeking out. Glue that down. And now we can... We can uh, glue down our basic white. Again, we're going to leave just a little bit of border of that Highland Heather. Okay. So there's the inside of our card. Um, on the back, since this is an easel card, this this is going to be laying on people's desk or shelves or you know whatever. And this blushing bride, being a light color, could get maybe a little dirty looking. So I just cut another piece. Um, this would be four and one eighth by five and three eighths. And I'm just going to put this on the bottom just to protect, or do I want to do it this way? I think I'm going to put this up because I did use this paper. I used both of these patterns in there, but I think I'm just going to go with the paper that would, that says, you're not going to really notice if there's anything on me. this here and one more thing that I that I'm gonna do is this is my signature button this is a little button that I like to put on um, the backs of my cards with my name on it Normally, I would put this on the back of the card, like this, okay? But since the easel is going to sit up, I, and people can see it from the back, I'm going to put my button right in the middle, of that panel, so that when it's sitting up, people can still see who it's from, or who made it on the back. Okay. So we're getting there. We're getting our, our easel part of it done. I'm going to go ahead now and I am going to, what do I do with my sample card? Okay. Glue these. I love that rub, the scalloped heart in the back, you know, is the layering piece. I love those. Let's get that centered. Push that down. So I have my two hearts. The yay for love is going to go over here off to the side once we put our 
patchwork quilt down. And then the, ha the I Have You is going to be my stopper. So we can go ahead and when you... You, when you're creating your stopper for your easel card, you want it to stand up so that this panel catches on it. So what I am going to do is I'm going to put some dimensionals on the back of this heart. I think I'm going to go ahead and put some extras on there. That's, this is overboard. Um, but I just, I don't want it to rock. I want it to be really nice and flat. So I'm going to take off all the backings. And what I want to do is I am going to center this and put my, the point of my heart down to the bottom. Just eyeball it. So see how it's catching? See how the stopper catches it? So it helps it stand, the easel stand up? Easel cards, in my opinion, are the best way to show off a quilt card. You can make that quilt block... Um, just stand right up in front of them and it is just the best way I think to show off a quilt block. Okay, so let's get over to the two four inch pieces that our our patchwork heart is going to sit on. I chose Highland Heather again and this is a four inch piece of basic white that I ran through the tasteful texture embossing folder. I'm not going to emboss my patchwork heart. There's a lot of patterns and stuff going on and I really didn't feel like I had an embossing folder that wouldn't just make it look like it was competing with the paper. Um, I have a lot of what I would, if you had to look at an embossing folder and say, well, is that subtle or is that a busy pattern? I have a lot of busy patterns. So um, I'm going to leave my patchwork valentine alone, but I did emboss the background that it's going to sit on. So what we can do is we can glue this four inch piece to the Highland Heather square. Okay, and um, I'm not going to do it now, but this is going to sit. Remember I said I, I was leaving this even though I'm going to cover it up. I'm going to use the edge of that designer series paper to line up my, my patchwork valentine. As you can see, it fits right along the lines of all the designer series paper. So I'm going to use that designer series paper as a guide for my placement. Okay. I think what we're going to do is we're going to get our heart on here and then we will attach it to the card base. Okay. So set your card base aside. Let's bring back in our heart. That glue has had time to dry. And now all we're going to do is we're going to cut our heart off of the grid paper. Just follow along the outside, cutting right up to the edge of the designer series paper. I will share um, a tip with you, something that I did. Now, I did not emboss my heart, but what I did do to help lay all of these intersections and all of these seams flat was I got out my stampin' and my, my cut and emboss machine. I laid the number one platform down. Then I 
laid the number two platform down, laid my heart on it, put my two number three clear um, plates on top of that, but not on the side that's been cut up, um, the smooth side of your number three clear plates. I ran it through and all it did was just smooth out all of my seams without embossing. And it just really looks flawless. So that's a tip that you can do if you don't want to emboss your quilt squares, but you want to help all those seams lay nice and flat, then just run it through your machine without an embossing folder. You just want those rollers to help um, make everything lay nice and flat. So here we have our heart. This is all throwaway. Let's bring in, and what this uh, four inch square, and what you're gonna do is you're gonna glue your heart to the piece of basic white that's been embossed. It should fit in there really nicely. Make sure your edges and your points all line up. Just push it down. And there you have your, your patchwork heart. Now what we're going to do is bring in our card base. And I'm lining up my block along to make sure it matches those seams. I am going to bring in a pencil and I am lightly going to draw a line right, the, the far right side, because I need to know where not to, where to stop putting glue. You don't want any glue to be on the top part of your patchwork heart because it needs to stand up. It needs to pop up. So I, I don't, I want glue right along there, but it needs to stop before my pencil mark so it doesn't come out here too much. And then for the bottom, I know that if I put glue right along this edge, then that's going to catch the bottom, but I'm not going to go all the way to the end because this glue is going to move around. So I'm going to do like that. I'm going to come up here and I'm just going to put a little line of glue right there. And then again, I'm going to put this left hand corner down here, line it up with my, my edge here, push down. Now bring it up to make sure that you don't have any glue. peeking out through here because that glue could catch and your card won't open. And now your, your uh, patchwork heart is glued to your easel. Okay. Now comes the fun of embellishing. So we have an extra, we have our heart here that says yay for love. And you can put that anywhere that you like. Now, if you notice, because of these layers, um, I have a gap right here. This is the side that I'm going to put my dimensionals on. I don't want to put any dimensionals on this side because it'll just make it uneven. So when that this side is laying flat on my patchwork and you have this gap here, I'm going to put a couple of dimensionals just right, right down here. And that'll just help even out the bulk of the card. And you just pop it up and play with. You don't want your heart going outside of the, the side of your card because you're, it still has to fit in an envelope. 
Just put it like that. Now, if you want to, you could put some glue right here. That doesn't really bother me. I just wanted the, um, the layers to even out. So I'm just going to leave it like that. To make this different from the other card, which I used the um, Artistry Blooms sequins. Again, in, in my sleep, I think of ways to change things up just to make, to give you another example. So instead of the sequin, I am going to take my real red ribbon and I'm going to create a little bow for the center of my heart. So I'm just going to wrap this around my finger. Hold it. Bring that around to the back and then push in my ribbon from this side and pull and then just even out my little bows here and decide how big you want it to be. I'm trying not to add a lot of bulk to this card if you're thinking along the lines of postage. But then I got to thinking, you know, Valentines are usually given to very special people. So if I have to pay extra postage to get their Valentine to them, they are so worth it. But I do try to conscientiously try to not add a lot of bulk to the cards. But Valentine's Day is special, so. And then just cut off. And just cut this side off. And then we'll add, I'm going to add my bow right to the center of my heart. And I'm going to do that with a glue dot, which I had last night right in front of me. It's okay. We'll pull out another one. I think I'm going to use two glue dots. Okay, and I'm going to glue that right to the center of my heart. And then, let's see, what else can we embellish? Kind of going off of the sample card I made, I used the, the heart from the dog punch. This punch is retired, but I needed a little heart. And that punch has a little heart. So I punched out some real red. I didn't like that pool party. But I just punched out some hearts. And these hearts are good. If whatever you don't use can become confetti in a shaker card. And I was just going to throw down some little hearts here. Just to give the bottom of my card some more interest. Now you can use glue dots or you can just put a little tiny dab a little tiny dab of liquid glue. I like to start with my outside hearts here in the corner and then just center the other two between these corner ones and the big heart. Okay, that glue's gonna grab any time now. So I'm just throwing out some little hearts. I was thinking of them as like little rose petals. And not keeping it straight, I'm just gonna bring them up a little bit. The embellishing is totally up to you how you want to embellish.
And then what I thought I would do is bring in, for a little bit of bling, bring in the rhinestones. And I was thinking about putting them in the center of those little red hearts. I've got my take your pick tool with the putty end that will help me slide the little rhinestones off. Whoops, stay on there. Just for a little bit of shine. It's a little bit of bling. And you could continue to embellish. Maybe you have um, some leaves or some greenery that you might want to run, you know, tuck underneath your heart here. Or maybe you have an arrow that you would want to tuck an arrow, um, like a Cupid's arrow going through there. Um, you can you can just find some other things to, to give it some more wow, whatever your personality is. But that there is the patchwork easel valentine. So I hope that you enjoyed it. Hey, Debbie, thank you. Marilyn! Hello, Anne. Hi. Just peeked over and saw the comments. Tony, you're here. Thank you for sharing. How did PT go? Hi, Susan. Hi, Jean. Deborah. Pat. Sharon, you're here. Oh, I'm glad you guys could all get on and um, catch it before it was over. Okay, so. Oh good, your PT went well. That's good to hear. So that is today's, that was today's project using some of the new things from the mini catalog. Uh, those things were the um, Sweet Talk Designer Series paper and the Happy and Heartfelt Sentiments. And then also using things from the annual catalog like the uh, the heart punches. Um, this is uh, the real red. I believe this is in the mini catalog too. I think, I think this real red ribbon is in the mini catalog. I don't think it's the annual one. But any any red ribbon that you've got will work, or whatever color that you're working with. Um, my embellishments are out of the annual catalog. If, if I was to have stayed with the baker's twine, this you can find in the annual catalog. I had tied a bow thinking I would use that, but then in the middle of my sleep, I thought, oh, let's change it up and let's use some ribbon to give it some more dimension. Um, so just, you know, just embellish your your cards. I'd love to see your cards on the quilts, Quilt Cards and More page and see what ideas you came up with to change this card and make it your own. And it gives all of us more inspiration for our cards. So if you don't mind sharing, we would love to see your cards. And that's, that's today. So thank you for joining me. And um, I will see all of you next week. But you know, I like to share things throughout the week on my business page and in the group. So I will see everybody next Thursday. <laughs>